So let's talk now about the research on a ketogenic intervention and type 2 diabetes. I mean, where's the proof that this works? Let's begin by talking about a trial that I am fortunate enough to be the primary investigator of. It is actually the largest and the longest trial of type 2 diabetes and a ketogenic intervention. There are 400 intervention patients, and of those 400 intervention patients, 262 of them have type 2 diabetes, and the remainder have prediabetes. This trial was sponsored by Verta Health and is occurring at Indiana University Health here in Lafayette, Indiana, at the medical clinic that I am the medical director of. Now, what happened with these patients? Well, first let me tell you a little bit about them. The average age of the patients in this trial was 54. They were about two-thirds female, one-third male. And the average BMI of the patients coming into the trial was 41, which was quite high. And many of them had the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes for a very long time. So what was the intervention? The intervention was that we gave them individualized carbohydrate nutrition instruction with the goal of getting them into nutritional ketosis. Now, what makes this trial different than others is that we actually were able to show that they were in nutritional ketosis because we were checking their blood ketone levels on a regular basis. So, what happened? Well, let's start with weight and weight loss. And one of the important things to say is that these patients were not calorie restricted. These patients were instructed to eat until they felt full, ensuring that they were getting an adequate amount of fat. So what happened in only 10 weeks to their weight without restricting calories? Well, in only 10 weeks, the weight dropped by over 7% on average. And you might wanna say, hmm, did that last? Well, our preliminary six month results show not only did the 7% last, it almost doubled. Because at six months, the average weight loss was 12%. And once again, I wanna remind you, this was without calorie restriction. And that is a really critical piece. If you're constantly being told to eat less and less, that can be difficult over time. But what this trial and what this weight loss result shows us is that patients who aren't calorie restricting but being given instructions on carbohydrate restriction can lose weight and sustain it over the long haul. Now, of course, the question is, was this seen in other trials? Because in science, it's really important to see a result but also know that that result is something that can be seen in another trial. And these results that we saw with weight loss have been seen in past trials as well. There was a trial by Dashti published in Molecular and Cellular Biology. And this trial actually was a very long trial, extending out over 54 weeks. And what we saw with weight loss was not only was the weight loss incredibly significant, just like we saw in our trial here, but it was sustained over the trial, over the 54 weeks. So people were able to lose weight and they were able to sustain it. Another very important study was done by Bowden and published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Now this was a very short study with the intervention actually occurring only over two weeks. But what do we see? With weight loss in that short period of time, guess what? It's incredibly significant as well. So once again, when we look at weight loss in these three trials, we see consistent results. Now, of course, this was a study about diabetes. So what happened with patients' blood sugar control in our study? Well, again, in only 10 weeks, in the patients with type 2 diabetes, they had a dramatic drop in their blood sugar, represented by a 1% drop in their A1C. Now, A1C is an average blood sugar over three months, and 1% 
is an incredibly significant decrease. And we see this decrease occurring no matter what their starting blood sugar or A1C was. It went down in everyone. What about the other trials? In the DASHD trial that we talked about before, we see once again consistent results with the decrease in blood sugar. Blood sugar decreases and stays down. And how about in the short Bowden trial? Same thing. Not only do we see a decrease in blood sugar, but this is happening over an incredibly short period of time. Patients got normal blood sugar levels in the two-week intervention period. But once again, I'll point out that these are consistent results. Our trial showed something that was simultaneously occurring that was thought not to be able to be done, which was that improvement, that significant improvement in blood sugar while these patients were taking less medications. So our patients had better blood sugars with less medication to control those blood sugars. In fact, on the patients who started the trial on insulin, in the first 10 weeks alone, 87% of those patients had their insulin levels decreased or totally eliminated. Think about that. In a patient who had been taking insulin for years, to be able to get off that medication in only 10 weeks, that's a quality of life improvement, but we also know it's also a financial improvement because these medications, insulin and the others that we were able to decrease, cost a lot of money. And it wasn't just blood sugar control that was improving. Cholesterol improved as well. In fact, in only 10 weeks, the triglycerides of our 262 patients with type 2 diabetes improved 22%. That is a dramatic improvement in a known cardiovascular risk factor, again, occurring over a short period of time. 